Yo, what is good everybody? This is Joey from HPTCG here and I am bringing you a crazy this deck is dropping bombs every single turn it is red purple luffy obviously based on the title that you guys clicked on and uh this is after probably like 30 or 40 games of me playing um i think this deck has some really strong matchups i think it can easily beat luchi if you high roll it can, if you high roll you can beat basically any deck in the game like this deck is really really cool so i'm gonna go ahead and show you guys right now all right so let's check out what we got we got Obviously, four Newgate. We have three of the Shanks. I don't think it's as necessary. I don't think you need to play four of them. Um, we're playing four of the Baccarat. What this does is it's a blocker, but also on your opponent's attack, you can trash a card from your hand. And then your leader or a character gains 2,000 power for the turn. Also, I don't know if you guys can read this or not, but it says leader or character. So like realistically, if you want to protect like your kid or even, you know, for example, like a, a bond clay, you can actually do that pretty well. Also, if someone attacks into bond clay, that's like really small, like a pudding searcher per chance, you can play this Baccarat, or I'm sorry, you can block with Baccarat. And if they attack into the bond clay again with like something else, you can just discard a dead card and give it and use it as a 2k counter. It's pretty good, it's pretty good. Um, also, it's a blocker too, which is really nice and a 1k counter. Obviously, we're playing four of the bond clay, Card's really strong in the deck. Uh, we're playing four Khalifa. We're playing four Zordro. Four Friend of Suke. This card actually won me a, a game one time uh, with the with the rush. Playing four Sanji, of course. We're playing four Smoothie um, because if we go second, by the way, guys, and we go into Bond Clay on turn two, then our turn three we can easily go into um, Smoothie and then also attack for seven K because or no 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 we'll attack for six K. Wait no. Yeah, no, we'll, we'll attack for 6k and then and then play the smoothie. So this is just a really good going second option if you don't find the kid. I found I found that like if you go second with this deck and you do ramp to 7 Dawn and you don't have anything to play on 7, you get, you get really far behind. So that's why I have a lot of options for you to play um, like a 7 cost character. So for example, we have like, you know, we have 8. We have 4 Captain Kid, we have 4 Smoothie. And it's just really powerful. And then the late part of the game is just when you start dropping bodies, bro. You start, dr bro. Bro, this deck is so overwhelming. Sometimes it's crazy. This is the best addition to the deck right here. It's the Linlin. Lin. This this leader is now not a three life leader. It is a four life leader. If you see one of these, and if you see multiple multiple of these, it is a five life leader or more. And it's just it's really good. We're playing two bullet just for the the black yellow Luffy matchup. Like this card, they have to Ice Age uh, Egghead it, which of course they might have, but if they don't have the Ice Age Egghead, then they pretty much automatically lose because you just rest their. Uh, their sabos and then you just attack for like you know like 20k essentially or you know like 16k something like that uh it's just really powerful um if captain kid of course just make your leader a 7k for the entire turn it's pretty strong uh also there's no downside because you can ramp it ramp it back up with luffy just a really good card in general playing two rad beam and we're playing three of the gatling um gatling is good for the trigger uh even though we are playing baccarat which is very similar to gatling in a sense um, I do like having the trigger if because I like to take my first life pretty much for free and then hover at two life for like basically the entire game you know maybe one life but this card right here if we do trigger it first and we don't have like a bond clay for example then it's just really bad or if we do trigger it one time one time I, I didn't get this on camera by the way but one time I had a uh, Zoro Joro on my two dawn turn I'm sorry on my three dawn turn and then I triggered into Gatling to go to uh go to four dawn and then yeah yeah four dawn and then on my turn i went to six dawn and then on i went uh i i, I zordroed and then i was able to go kid on my three dawn turn going first which was absolutely nuts um it's just it's just it's just crazy bro because you ramp twice basically in in two turns so instead of going to six you go to um you go to seven which is which is really good so yeah that's the deck i'm gonna show you guys some videos i Stomped this purple Luffy. I'm gonna show you that one first because it's really funny, and then I'll show you a really close pudding game. But yeah, enjoy. All right, so right off the bat, I'm not sure exactly how this matchup's supposed to go. Um, I don't really have a lot of experience playing uh, red purple Luffy into Pluffy, but I would assume that I would do decent into him. I start out pretty pretty good. Um, basically, what you're looking for is you're looking for some ramp cards in the beginning, and then you're looking for like something to ramp into. It's pretty much pretty much it. So you're looking for like a Zoro Joro, or you're looking for a Bond Clay. And that's it. Uh, so I go six into his life right here. And he goes ahead and I believe he counters this one right here. Yep. And then I go seven into his life right here. And then he goes ahead and I believe he takes this one. But 
or he could block with Kit. No, he takes it. I play another Zora Jor, I go ahead and pass my turn. For whatever reason, if he doesn't have like a poly, you know, and the Zora Jor survives, then I can just, you know, have the Zora Jor as an extra attacker, is, is, is my thought process on that. But he does have the poly, he does pop the Zora Jor, totally fine at the end of the day. And he decides to swing seven into my life, I decide to take it, doesn't really matter too much right there. I ramp to nine dawn, I play, I go ahead and play a uh, new gate. I swing eight into his life because I want to pressure him down. I actually completely forgot about the uh, the nine cost Linlin and that the purple Luffy has access to it. So he decides to play it here and I'm like, damn. <laughs> I'm like, I should have attacked into the kid then if that was the case. But you live and you learn. Definitely was not was not thinking uh, clearly for sure. And uh, this deck, Purple Luffy, is really interesting with the, with the 9 cost Linlin. I didn't even think about that. That's a really good addition. I, I could see why in set 9 it's going to be really powerful. But he does have swing 8 into me with the uh, Poly. I go ahead and counter with a 2k counter here with the Khalifa. Because uh, I wanted to play the... If I didn't have anything else, so I wanted to play the smoothie if I didn't have anything else, but luckily I drew it into the shanks. So I go ahead and swing six into his life right here. If he took it, I was going to swing ten into his life, but since he didn't take it, I'm just going to swing into the poly just to clear the board so I don't have like a bunch of bodies trying to take cards from my hand. And then I go ahead and play a shanks to pop the, uh, the Lin Lin, and then I go about my merry way. And Purple Luffy has basically literally zero way of dealing with top end, so I think that's why I'm favored in this matchup. And uh, he swings six into my life, and I go ahead and counter with the smoothie because I don't think I'm gonna, I don't think I'm gonna play the smoothie next turn. I was just gonna go really tall with all three of my 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 guys on the field, uh, my leader, and my two guys, and then he's gonna go ahead and heal again. I said knock it off. <laughs> that was pretty funny. He swings seven in my life. I go ahead and take this one. Just to try to find some answers. Draw into another shanks, which is pretty helpful. And uh, I just go ahead and do a full board clear here. I swing ten into the kid. The kid goes down. I swing six into his life. Pretty sure he counters out of this one right here. Yep, and I swing 12, which you'll take. And then here's another Shanks. Shanks popping the, the Lin Lin. And then, dude, I just have a massive board. Like, this is so devastating. He goes ahead and swings 6. I go ahead and counter at the smoothie again. And then, very familiar, he goes uh, 9. with. I think he plays another Lin, Lin here. So, like, this guy had hella life, bro. This guy legit, like, had, like, 8 life. Now he goes Kaido. Yep, and then Kaido is going to swing into me. I go ahead and take it. I draw into the Frankenosuke, and then this is exactly what I needed right here. I needed the Linlin, -Lin, and now I can heal. All I needed was one blocker or a Linlin. -Lin. I mean, technically, I had the blocker either way with Sanji, but I didn't want to play it. And I swing 12 into this Kaido. He lets it. He uh, saves it. Swing 12 into the Kaido. And then I go ahead and just go Linlin, -Lin, and, then heal, and then he quits pretty much right now. So that's pretty funny. All right, so this is the uh, pudding game. This one was way closer. I, I, I'm not sure. I think I'm actually supposed to lose this matchup because he has so many so many options to trash life, and I have very few life already. <laughs> so like trashing life is uh, is really scary. And uh, he ramps really quickly too. He ramps actually faster than I can if I, especially if I don't draw anything. And in this situation, I did not draw anything. I considered playing the Bakarat, but I was like, ah, uh, I'd rather just attack big here and put pressure on the pudding, because that's what pudding loses to. It's, it's it loses to pressure. So I go ahead and swing nine. He goes ahead and takes it, of course, doesn't trigger into anything. And I believe this turn is just when he goes swings nine into me, which I'll gladly take. And uh, yeah, like I said, you're looking for, a, you know, a, a Zoro Jor or a Bonclay early. And you're looking for like a Captain Kid or a Newgate or something to ramp into. There's the there's the uh, Captain Kid right there. And there's the Bonclay. And I go eight into life. Next turn, I'll be able to go into the Kid and uh, kind of keep going from there. Now... I think I accidentally played the wrong card against this guy. I'm not sure, though. It could have been... No, actually, that was the Luchi game, but I ended up winning that one anyway. Um, one of the games I played a a, a, a a bullet on accident when I tried to play a new game, and it almost cost me. But this guy goes ahead and goes into Miss All Sunday. I don't think that's a really good card in this deck, personally. I think uh, this deck struggles with having a lot of dead cards. And look at me saving the Frankenosuke just for uh, just for, uh, for for the future in case I need it and discarding the uh, Khalifa. I go ahead and swing 9 into his life right here. And I keep the, uh, the Bonclay active because I want it to be a really uh, impactful card. Uh, <laughs> a really impactful card whenever he plays the, the Big Mom. And the second he plays Big Mom, I have a 12k body. I, I type in the chat, I'd be swinging big. This guy was not a fan of it. And uh, he decides to counter the, the 9k right there, which is probably a good idea because I'm not swinging for anything less than 9k for the rest of the game. So he might as well counter the, the 9k now. Uh, of course, he's going to go into Big Mom here, gain a life, trashing mine, which I don't necessarily like. I was hoping to find, I don't think I found a lot of... um heal in this game with the uh 
what's it called with the Linlin. So I was kind of just going brute force gorilla on him. I I wanted I, this deck can sometimes play Onami. It can also play like some cards that KO out of life, the pudding at least from what I've seen. You know, it could be like people randomly playing it on the simulator. But I was a little worried not attacking with the Bonclay first. But I was like worse. I was like I was like if he even if he beiges, it's still fine. At least my Bonclay is active, and and I'll and I'll take that because it's not like I'm gonna get rid of the Linlin. In fact, I have no way of getting Linlin getting rid of Linlin. That's why I think RP Luffy is not favored in this matchup. It's because like I don't I can't really get rid of Linlin other than just attacking into it shanks doesn't really do that good of a job so i go ahead and go yep i go uh 10 into life i wanted to bait one for radical beam but then i realized i had plenty of counters so i'm totally fine i go 10 into life right here he goes ahead and takes it and i go okay if you want to take that here's this 12 and he goes ahead and takes the 12 as well and he has like 13 cards in hand right now bro he's just taking every hit known to man he goes ahead and swings into my bunk of pudding of course that's going to go down right there and uh, the the big mom is uh, is gonna put in some work for sure. I think he's gonna play another big mom right here, which is funny. Uh, funny that that works like that. And uh, man, I, you know, now that I think about it, I saved this Frankie for like the entire game, thinking it could come in handy, and it actually did. That's that's really good resource management by me. I've been messing. I've messed up in a couple of my other videos that I posted before, where I'm going over replays and I counter with the wrong card, or like I don't play a card at the right time, and I'm like, damn, like what am I doing? But right here, I actually discard the Frank, the the Sanji, and then I use the zero cost event, discarding the zero cost event, the Gatling, and I save the Frankie. And the new gate would have been nice, you know, like a turn or two ago, but now I'm like, I kind of have to just go for game. Unfortunately, I go ahead and swing. Uh, 11 yeah i go ahead and swing 11 into life right here and then i uh, go ahead and use my uh kit effect put my leader up plus 1000 i'm gonna go ahead and ramp that back up in a second he's gonna give me uh, a bunch of 2ks he's gonna give me 2k 2k 1k 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 which is really good uh and i said let's see if you get i said let's see if you get this beige and uh i'm like all right let's see uh i go ahead and swing actually do i do i do i win this game with the the frankie i actually don't think i do no, I don't. I'm sorry, guys. I edged you guys so hard, bro. This is not the game where I, where I won with Frankie. I'm sorry, guys. I, I edged you guys. My fault. My fault. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> Overall, I think RP Luffy's a really good deck. I think it has really strong matchups in this meta. I think it probably loses the things like Raise You. It probably loses the things like Zoro because they're just so aggressive so early on. But if they get a little bit of a slow start and you get a really good start, I think you can beat. I think you can beat both of them. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. I have some experience in, uh, with this deck now because I've been playing it for this video, but I haven't really played it as much as I would like to. I'm going to continue to play it over the course um, of the next few weeks. This is why I always need you guys to tell me how it is in your testing as well. If it's, you know, a trap, you let me know. I don't think so. I think I've been I think it's been playing pretty good for me. It's really fun to just drop big guys after big guys and getting there really quickly. And uh, yeah, so let me know what you guys think. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.